vibes for today. Hi, my name is Carissa. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I am so glad that you're here. And if you are a returning viewer, I greatly appreciate your support. Today's video <laughs> was very, very highly requested. So many requests that I couldn't ignore it anymore. So today we will be discussing my spiritual journey and my relationship with God, the divine, Mother Earth, and myself and my spirituality as a whole. We'll be covering all the bases today. Childhood, teenagehood, girlhood. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm a little bit nervous to film this video today because <laughs> I know I have family members watching this channel. And I'm just gonna say a quick disclaimer before we go any further is that my goal here is to tell my truth and to share with you my journey and this very special part of my identity. My goal is not to offend any person of any religion and I trust you all to hear each other out in the comments and to hear me out as well. If you don't feel that you can do that in a civilized, kind, loving manner, kindly exit out of this video. Spirituality is fickle. It's individual to each person. It's based off of said person's own life experiences. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I've had to sit down a few times to film this video because the nerves have just overtaken me. It's very nerve-wracking to open up about your spiritual beliefs on the internet because spirituality and religion is so divisive. It's something that people use <laughs> to beat other people over the head with and I definitely don't want that on this channel. This channel is a safe space for all. It's a safe space for anybody to talk about any kind of belief that they have as long as they are respectful in doing so. So let's go ahead and dive in Carissa Love's Spiritual Journey Chapter 1. As you all know, I was born and raised in Florida, specifically Central Florida, um, aka the Bible Belt. It was an interesting time. It was the early 2000s. It was before the age of the internet, really. So a lot of the things that I've learned in my spiritual journey and my disconnection and rejection of religion wasn't learned until later in life because I was not exposed to very much as a child. I was only exposed to one way of life and that was evangelical Christianity. I grew up in a very, very religious household, a very Christian household. I am the youngest of three girls. I have two lovely sisters. My father was a youth pastor in the very early stages of my life. He didn't do it for very, very long, um, but he was always very connected to the church, did a lot of charity work, a lot of volunteer work, and he involved us as a family as well to do the same things. I spent a lot of time um, in the church growing up and all of my friends were from the church. I didn't know anybody who had any other way of life. That was something that my parents decided as a kid to kind of keep me away from. So I was somewhat sheltered, actually pretty sheltered growing up. It was the type of early 2000s Christian household where I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter. I wasn't allowed to celebrate Halloween. I never believed in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny or any of those fun childhood childhood things. I always felt very disconnected from the people in my school because my family was more on the extreme side of Christianity. A lot of the other kids in my grade didn't understand why we went to church so much. My family and I attended church a lot and I was a part of a youth group, very strongly so. I don't know if any of you have ever attended an evangelical Christian church, but there is a lot of rhetoric and a lot of fear-mongering that takes place in places like that. Even in the youth group as a child, there was a lot of fear-mongering. I witnessed a lot of very crazy things <laughs> in the church and I witnessed all kinds of extreme ends of the Christian spectrum, like people speaking in tongues, 
people falling out during worship and passing out on the ground, sometimes convulsing. I experienced, as a very young child in the youth group, constantly being told about the rapture. If you don't know what the rapture is, the Christian faith, it's this idea that Jesus is going to one day return back to earth and take all of the believers to heaven while all the non-believers burn here in, on earth while earth perishes. And as a four, five, six, seven, year old child, that can be a very terrifying thought that you could get left behind. Your father, your sisters, your mother could be taken with Jesus, but you could be here burning on earth if you don't follow along and believe in what they're telling you to believe. As a child, I was always very curious. I was always asking questions that I don't think I should have been asking in a place like that. I wanted sense. I wanted logic. I wanted an answer for why Jesus would hurt these children that he loves so much. Because we were told so much so that Jesus loved us and he died for us on the cross and he did all these amazing things for us. But if we made one wrong move, our eternity could potentially just be hell. Burning, fire, pain, horrible, torture for eternity. That was the idea that was packaged and sold to me as a child. AKA, based off of the way I was raised, preying upon my naivete, I was indoctrinated in the Christian faith as a child. I didn't have any say because as a child, everything your parents do is considered right in your mind. You think that they think all the right things, that your parents have all the answers. So it wasn't until I got older that I started to form opinions of my own, question everything, which I think is important. I think it's healthy to question everything. I think it's healthy to question religion, art, your parents, your friends. I think if you're not asking questions then you're doing something wrong. And I always believe that. I mean, I remember when I was nine years old, I had a fairy themed bedroom. And this was a very controversial thing because fairies were considered mythical and witchcraft and bad and very much against Christianity. My childhood was stripped from me in a lot of ways. I didn't feel the feelings that other kids felt my age because I was experiencing this brainwashing and conditioning to one day grow up and just be another cog in the Christian church machine. The very early stages of my life were spent preparing for my death and I expanded on this a little more on my Patreon if you're curious. I do have a Patreon uh, where I post all kinds of things, but I posted a diary entry on how much I value death and think about death and contemplate death even to this day, especially to this day, because of the way that I was raised and how much value my parents and my church put on the afterlife that I was going to experience. When you spend so much of your developmental years picturing your death, that has to affect you in later stages of your life. So much value was put on my faith and the very existence of it and how I would move through the world as a Christian woman that at the age of 10 years old, before I even hit puberty, I had a purity ceremony in front of the church. Um, put on by my father. I apologize if my voice gets shaky. We're about to dive into a subject that I have a really hard time speaking about, so if you could give me some grace, I would greatly appreciate that. It's one of the more harrowing, traumatizing experiences that I've had in my lifetime that the trauma and aftermath of it didn't hit me until years later. And once I explain, it'll make more sense. Which brings me to chapter two. Purity culture is a thief of female 
sexuality. Purity culture is something that is so deeply embedded in not only our society, but so deeply embedded in the evangelical church, especially in the early 2000s. At the ripe age of 10 years old, I was just very excited to please my father and do what he thought was best for me and get his approval. But also, I was a child, so I was excited to put on a pretty dress and get a pretty ring and have all my friends and the important people of the church see me make this great act of commitment to our God. Basically, if you don't know, a purity ceremony is where you stand up in front of the church and your pastor and your father and you vow to not have sex before marriage, which would have been fine if I was a little bit older. I had been through puberty and I could make that choice for myself, but because I was a naive child, I was manipulated and grappling with that and coming to terms with that as I went through my teenage years and all the way up until adulthood has been very challenging and quite traumatic. The ghost of that ceremony has lingered like smoke everywhere in every relationship that I've had. That was the main reason why I felt as if I couldn't worship our God anymore because the older that I got and the more I thought for myself and asked these questions of why and as I went through puberty and fell in love for the first time and saw so many humans that I just wanted connection with and I wanted to explore my sexuality, I was met with these subconscious but eerily loud feelings of guilt, shame, regret, and sadness. My girlhood was tainted with waiting for my death and wasting my life on a promise that I could have never kept. The idea that my worth could dissipate if I had any kind of sexual experience really destroyed me. My worth from the time I was a child before my body even really developed or became my own was politicized and used to benefit the men in my church. The very idea that my self-worth was based off of how I used my body and who I fell in love with and how I expressed that love was so nerve-wracking day to day as you're growing up through teenage girlhood. That conditioning of your worth just being in your sexuality and being in what you can give a man was detrimental to my development. As I moved through my teenage years and my early 20s and even to this day, I can feel the echo chamber of religious trauma and I can feel the thoughts bouncing around in my head that my worth is slipping through my fingertips every time I engage in an act of love. And that's just me being completely transparent with you guys and this is the most transparent I've ever been on this channel so it's a lot for me. So I'm feeling a little nervous. Let me get a drink of water. <laughs> Christianity has very deep misogynistic roots and purity culture is something that is specifically reserved for young girls. None of the guys in our church had purity ceremonies. That was something that me and the other girls and my sisters experienced. Because of the evangelical conditioning of misogyny in the church, agendas that is pushed by the Christian church is that us as humans are inherently untrustworthy and we cannot trust our feelings. We cannot trust ourselves. The only person you can trust is God. When you grow up and you're told that you can't trust your own feelings, that your worth is tied to your body and the choices you make for your body, it will affect your self-image greatly. I had little to no confidence. I lost my innocence before I even really lost my innocence. <laughs> because of the way Christianity was affecting my mental health, the older that I got, I found worshiping Jesus to become more and more of a difficult task because I didn't feel this almighty love that all the men in my church felt. I felt used and isolated and insecure. All of the things that teenage girls experience, but mine just happened to be experienced through the eyes of the Christian men around me. I was kind of forced to exit that lifestyle because if I didn't, I really believe that it would have killed me eventually. When you're told for so long that that's what will happen, like it's fact, 
that you will burn if you don't accept Jesus and follow the Bible to a T. No wonder I have anxiety. <laughs> No wonder I'm so fascinated with death and the idea of death. Death is something I think about every day, but I think it's because it's simply the way that I was raised. I have to think about it. I've always thought about it, therefore I have to. The church always warns you about demons. It warns you about dabbling in things that will lure you to the dark side, but purity culture and misogyny is the biggest demon that I've ever faced. Getting used and left as a Christian girl is a unique experience to few and something I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. Which brings us to chapter three. my journey to witchcraft, where it began and where I am now. So, as a young girl, I very subtly and not so frequently would rebel against my church in little ways that made me feel like I was having tiny victories. When I was in fourth grade, I was gifted this book by my friend for my birthday, all about how to build fairy houses. It was the first time I was exposed to using the elements of nature to create something, and I absolutely fell in love with that idea. I built so many fairy houses in my backyard, and I didn't really tell my parents about it. They thought I was just playing outside, but I was building fairy houses and writing letters, asking the fairies to grant me wishes, and it was the first time that I felt connected to magic. Because of the conditioning of the church and the utter fear that I experienced <laughs> moving through this life as a teen girl, it took me a long time to commit to being a witch. I would do little things here and there. I would buy a tarot deck and shuffle it in secret and pull cards, or I would buy little crystals and hide them under my pillowcase. But it wasn't until I was around 18, 19 years old that I fully identified as a witch. I've always been drawn to mother nature and I've always found mother nature to be more nurturing than any god created by man. And I would like to clarify that there is such thing as Christian witches, so I'm totally not invalidating those of you who are Christian but also practice witchcraft, just to clarify. There are literally no limits in this life. If you are a Christian, you can still feel drawn to the craft, but still have an unwavering faith in your God. That is totally fine. That is totally okay. So if you are one of those people, definitely don't feel like you're alone because I felt like I was that way for a while. I thought I was a Christian witch, but then the more I get into my witchcraft journey, the more I realize that I don't really believe in any God per se from any religion. I just believe in everything. I love witchcraft because you don't have to worship a god, you don't have to worship anything. I don't like the idea of worshiping a higher power, but I love the idea of working with a higher power, co-creating with a higher power, which is a key element in witchcraft. I believe I have a spirit team of angels, ancestors that guide me through this life. You can choose what higher power best suits you. Nature, deities, or even yourself. Witchcraft is an individual journey and no two witches walk looks the exact same. I love the sense of freedom of oneself whenever you're practicing the craft, but I also love the idea of celebration of one's self, of one's own power, because we all have power that we can tap into. Every single one of us has magic running through our veins. You don't have to be born a witch. You don't have to be special because you already are. Anybody can practice witchcraft. Anybody can wield magic. One of the most important elements of witchcraft is trusting your intuition. I would say it is the one skill that you must have in order to practice the craft is 
listening to your intuition. And whenever you're raised to distrust your feelings, listening to your intuition can be a daunting task. And it's something that has taken me so much practice throughout the years. And I still have a really, 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 really long way to go. I question myself a lot and the residue of Christianity still lingers sometimes. But I love the fact that witchcraft is a journey, not a destination. There's no fear in it, only strength. and that's what drew me to it in the first place. Because my femininity was wielded as a weapon against myself by the men around me, I loved the idea that witchcraft celebrated femininity in all of its glorious ways. Witchcraft celebrates femininity in a way that feels very sacred to me. Practicing witchcraft is so opposite of the way that I was raised. The embracing of my femininity as something that belongs to me and nobody else is a way of rejecting my upbringing and celebrating my womanhood. I loved the idea that witchcraft embraces death in such a peaceful way. There is no fear surrounding your death in witchcraft. And I really was desperate to shift my perspective on that area of my life. I wanted to appreciate and welcome the cycle of life as nature does. I believe our afterlife is what we make of it. And I believe we make that decision as we live our lives through the type of life that we lead and through our choices. If anything, I believe that whatever you put out into this world, into this universe, comes back to you tenfold. And sometimes we carry lessons from past lives and carry different lessons into our future ones. Our souls go through repeated cycles as nature does because everything is one. Which brings us to chapter four. I'm going to recommend some books for you today that were integral to my spiritual journey. All right, the first book recommendation that I have for you all, it's not like the other ones, but it was a book that was really important during my teen years to me. We have The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. This book spoke to me so much as a young girl because I saw myself between the pages. I saw me and my sisters in The Lisbon Sisters. I'm still waiting on a book from the girl's perspective. This book perfectly encapsulates the idea of religious trauma in girlhood and how that affects your social life and your love life and your self-image. It perfectly encapsulates the feeling of being suffocated in a religious household and the ramifications of purity culture. What I love so much about this book, if I could sum it up in at least one sentence, I loved that the characters that were suffering such great trauma through religion and through their parents reclaimed death as a decision that they made when death is something that is so contemplated and valued in the Christian church. Not saying that the ending is not extremely sad, I'm not saying it's a good ending. It's definitely a tumultuous read. I love that the book ended that way and I understand the allegory of suicide in this novel and reclaiming death after being raised in such a way. This book is so important. There's also amazing 10 out of 10, my favorite film of all time that goes along with this novel. It's directed by Sofia Coppola. If you don't know, it stars Kristen Dunst. I highly recommend reading the book first and then watching the film, but yes, this is such an important read for all the religious trauma girlies. <laughs> okay. The next three books I have here are all witchy books that are really, really important and I think were very integral to my witchcraft journey. The first book I have here is Witchery, Embrace the Witch Within by Juliette Diaz. This is a really great entry-level beginner book for anyone who's just starting out in witchcraft. 
This covers all the basics, connecting with your intuition, connecting with nature. There's also a lot of easy beginner spells in here if you were curious. And it really describes the fact that witchcraft is all through your own inner power. And yes, you could have ingredients and you can have the right moon face in the sky and you could do all the right things. But at the end of the day, it's about embracing the witch within. And I really love this book for baby witches. So highly recommend. And it's really good to reread if you ever need a refresher on the basics. Next book I have here is Heal the Witch Wound. Reclaim Your Magic and Step Into Your Power by Celeste Larson. This is an absolute must read for anybody who feels anxious about practicing witchcraft or feels ashamed or guilty, whether that be due to your upbringing or due to societal conditioning. If you are a Christian turned witch, I highly recommend this novel. The Witch Wound is something that almost everybody experiences, really no matter how you were raised, because there's so much societal conditioning around witchcraft and that it's evil and taboo. And this really covers the history of burning of the witches and the plague of burning witches and killing young women in the name of rebuking witchcraft. It delves on the history of that. This really helped me get over my guilt of embracing my witchcraft journey. So this is a really good book for anyone who is struggling with accepting the fact that they want to practice witchcraft. Highly, highly recommend this one. And the last book I have for you all today is Psychic Witch, A Metaphysical Guide to Meditation, Magic, and Manifestation by Matt Aurin. Aurin? This book is extremely important for not only exercising your psychic abilities, because yes, you have psychic abilities, we all have psychic abilities, but to reconnecting with your intuition, which is something that was really, really important to me based off of my own personal journey and the lack of connection I had with myself. This really helped me come back to my own inner power. This really helps you discover which psychic abilities you have and what your strengths and weaknesses are. There's a lot of exercises in this novel about manifestation or exercising your psychic abilities. And in order to properly practice witchcraft, you have to be able to meditate properly. So I find that meditating was something that I really struggled with due to all of the intrusive thoughts that I was experiencing. This book really helped me perfect the art of meditation because before being a magician, you must master meditation. And my loves, that is all that I have for you today. I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end if you did, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please play nice in the comments, let me know your thoughts, and feel free to share your own spiritual journeys down below. I've given you a piece of my story. Please handle with care. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video. Many more spiritual witchcraft videos to come, I promise. I love you all and I hope you have the most magical day. See you next time. Bye!